Our headliner now, Kellyanne Conway, Council of the President, and welcome back to our program morning, from the Kellyanne. North Lawn. Good, Good morning. morning to you. What, what is your message to America today? What's the President's message, Kellyanne? The president put his message perfectly last hour, Bill. He's calling for unity and healing. He's going to Dayton and El Paso to express condolences on behalf of an angered, outraged, and grieving nation. Also to thank the first responders and their heroism. And also to meet with victims, uh, families, medical professionals, everybody who has really been affected by these back-to-back -back tragedies in our country. I can't think of a, a time when we see more of a split screen, though. You've got the politically motivated craven politicians, many of whom think they should be president, on one side, screaming about the president, and then you have the president not taking the bait and just keeping a very low tone and calling for the country to heal, to unify, and putting forth concrete proposals on men about mental health, about red flags, about background checks. And he has been talking to legislators on both sides of the aisle because, after all, Congress has failed to do its job on health care, on immigration, and yes, on safety and security. And so he stands ready. He's here in Washington working every single so day. So can we, we dig into that, Kelly? Can we dig yes. into that? What what did the president mean by there is an appetite for background checks? What are you suggesting he is hearing in terms of support for change there? A couple things, Sandra. First of all, it is the president two days ago in his address to the nation, if not the world, that he introduced the idea of the red flags. And that is the red flag legislation, of course, would help in an emergency situation to keep guns, firearms out of hands of violent criminals. Probably could have helped in Dayton, Ohio, since we all know now that this sick, twisted individual murderer, this monster had a kill list for boys and a rape list for girls. People knew this about him for years, but it wasn't in his record when he went to legally procure firearms, probably because of the HIPAA laws, because of the privacy. So why can't we carve out exceptions to that as we have for well, other some of these Some of these red flags are already in, in place. And the red flags Se are already in 17 place. 17 states but, in but Washington, But law enforcement sometimes can't have it. That's right. And so the president is calling upon other states or indeed the federal legislature bill to, to take those best practices from the states and put it into federal legislation. He's talked to Chairman Lindsey Graham, de a Republican of South Carolina. He's, uh, he is working with him and Dick Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut. There's another background check bill, Toomey Mansion, another bipartisan bill that could have some bipartisan bicameral support. Mitch McConnell has said, let's get some bicameral bipartisan support. So when everybody for decades now, and I mean decades, screams, do something, do something, and then they march away to something else. They just leave that and talk about something else. This is the president who will do something because he's done it on every issue since he's gotten here. And he sees that also there's a political appetite for this and there certainly is a public demand. But it's this president who's talking about the concrete proposals. I, mean, I cannot believe that the Quinnipiac poll came out yesterday of the thousand Democrats running for, for president, 20 are below the margin of error. A four, two of them are at 2%. Four of them are at 1 percent, 20 of them are under 1 percent, mm -hmm. and they're using this tragedy to try to gain leverage. Well, How do I know that? Right because the other this. two cable you, stations right said this the, is Beto's right. moment. He can you, get momentum. Right That's a disgrace. You're the political season, but you said he hasn't taken the bait. He did take he a, better, a better O'Rourke earlier today on Twitter. Joe Biden well, apparently is going to say this today in Iowa on screen. Trump offers no moral leadership, no interest in unifying the nation, no evidence the presidency has awakened his conscience in the least. Instead, we have a president president with a toxic tongue who has publicly and unapologetically embraced a political strategy of hate, racism, and division. Your response on that, Kelly? My response is that is a political speech that doesn't save a single soul, prevent another mass shooting, or heal the wounded today. It is the president, not the wannabe presidents, who are, who's going across this country today to try to bring people together. And then returning here to Washington tonight, Bill and Sandra, waiting for Congress to do its job, put legislation on his desk that he can sign and make a difference in this country. And I would say to Joe Biden, since he said it first, since he's making these incendiary remarks, that again, don't heal or, or a single soul, don't bring back a single innocent that was gunned down mercilessly and senselessly. I would say to Joe Biden, you got elected to the Senate when you were 29. You are clearly, and I mean clearly, evidently 78 or so now. 
you've been in you've been here for 50 years. You were in you were in the White House where I work for eight years, and you did exactly what? You were in the debates last week. You could have brought this issue up sui sponte on Got your it. own, spontaneously on your own, and you didn't. Out of, out of so they, they're reacting and they're craving for political points. And this and my boss, our he, president, he's 76. Just for the record, out of, out of 76. Sorry, for, out of respect for those that are anticipating the president's arrival um, in, in Texas and Ohio. Just moments and hours from now, Kellyanne, sticking with this subject and what we just heard from the president as he makes his way there along with the first lady, he said, quote, moments ago, I'm concerned about ri the rise of any group of hate, any yes. kind of supremacy. He's obviously addressing um, criticism of his own rhetoric as well. I just wonder what the president has been saying in the wake of that criticism uh, behind closed doors when there had been calls for him to tone down his own rhetoric um, in the highly politicized environment obviously some have chosen to blame the president well they have and he's not he's not blaming them back what he is saying is he just answered this he was asked the same question an hour ago Sandra and the president said I have toned it down and I'm trying to bring people together and unify Look, if he hadn't gone to El Paso and Dayton, that would be the story today. Since he is going and he gave the speech the other day, that's the story today. So he's not doing this for people who want his job. He's doing this because it is his job. And it doesn't matter if these candidates make speeches about peaches today. Nobody really cares if they're using this for political, trying to use this for craven political gain. This president does what presidents do and what this president and first lady have done every single time we've had a tragedy. They went to the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. They went to Las Vegas, Nevada after that shooting, which still doesn't have a motive. We, they went to Parkland, Florida. They've been on the ground when natural disasters have taken lives and, and wreaked havoc and damage to other lives. They have been there for this country, and they will do the same they've done for two and a half years and will do for the next five and a half years as president and first lady today on the ground. This president is calling for unity healing, and all I can see is people from the other side of the political aisle, instead of saying, how can we come together and help this nation? What can we do legislatively? What can we do emotionally? What can we do culturally? Instead, they're attacking him and saying, don't come. They don't run his schedule. And, and the fact is this president denounced unequivocally and specifically the other day, racism, bigotry, hate, evil, and yes, white supremacy. His comments an hour ago are important because our own FBI director, Chris Ray, has been testifying in briefing of late. We have all forms of hate in this country, white supremacy, Antifa, anti-Semitism, certainly. You've heard that out of the mouths of a specific congresswoman of late. Okay. So there's just, all forms of get, hate, yeah. and we need to be, we need to get, our, we need to get ourselves around we, that. We the president have, is talking have a to the nation. Left. I, I the opponents are talking I, about I, him. I don't mean to interrupt here. He said, "My Please. critics are political people that are trying to make points." Uh, Joaquin Castro is a Democratic congressman from Texas. He sent out a tweet yesterday that identified some uh, donors for the Trump campaign. He went on MSNBC about 90 minutes ago defending that position and said the following. When you make a political contribution, especially to a federal candidate, that's a public record. And so that graphic lists people's names, and many of them are business owners, so they actually own those companies. Their money is being taken and used to fuel these hateful ads, and it has put millions of people in this country in fear. There are people right now that are living in fear, and I don't think the president understands that. To, to be fair, he was challenged on the air as to why he did that, because the names and the companies else. are now made public, some of them anyway. He has not backed down. The tweet is still up, and your message on that is what, Kellyanne? He should take the tweet down. He should apologize to those individuals, and he should set a better example as a member of Congress whose twin brother happens to be running for president. And uh, he, you know, Joaquin Castro, he was criticized right, left, and center for doing this. A lot of people in the media took to Twitter to say that you can't do this. This is a terrible precedent. It doesn't matter that it's public record. It matters that he's put together some kind of target list. And he is making, trying to make life miserable or worse for law-abiding citizens who are expressing their First Amendment right to put their money where their politics is. They support the president. They want him reelected, I suppose. That's why they're donating. But they are private citizens. He's a member of Congress. He has responsibility and accountability to try to protect the population, not to try okay. to make them a target. Kellyanne Conway, thank you for your time from thank you. the North Lawn. Thank you, Kellyanne. Thank you. Thank you.